Don't blink, it's your boy Aang, still a little bit sick, but why does this feel an intro? Well, you can clearly see I changed shirt. It is not for the uh, specific theatrical, uh, specific effect of the video. We even changed drink with a Sprite today, I'm not kind of dry. Still have the same meal and this is still the same mukbang. So basically what happened was, I told you guys I was under a lot of medication. Um, Friday, I took a small break because I was, I was busy being woozy. Yeah, we filmed the video on Friday, the first half. And then uh, today was Sunday. So I slept yesterday. I had horrible, horrible um, block sinus. So I didn't want to do a video with that. Um, especially for this subject. This is about Akira Toriyama, one of my um, artistic hero, one of the person I uh, that I owe a lot to. I grew up watching Dragon Ball as such a big, big place in our heart. I'm still seeing, three days later, I'm still seeing uh, people post about it. And um, that's why I make, want to make this video. That's why I want to finish this video. Usually what I would do is I would be like, fuck it. It's not genuine if I don't finish it the same day. I'm going to grab a napkin because I don't want you guys to, to hear me uh, sniff the whole night or the whole day. <laughs> it's 4, 4 11, so it's not that bad. Now, uh, in case you didn't notice, um, I'm, again, it's Sunday. I cheated by going back to the video and uh, ended where saw where I ended. So before we continue, I just want to say again, R.I.P. Because this is again a new video, and I feel the need to to again salute the person, right? Um, I had six gigs. So for the people that don't know, um, emulators game of GBA and GBC. GBC were around five megabytes. Uh, game Boy Advance was about. 10 megabytes, uh, no, no, not megabytes, sorry, yeah, megabytes, MB, uh, not gigabytes, giga, hell yeah, Sprite, I'm feeling much better, you can already tell, we had a lot of spicy food this morning, so that's good, mm. fuck, this is gonna be a healthy, also, with lemon, I also have honey, that's gonna help also, but all of this to say, like, to me, it's insane, because, I remember having 250 games of Game Boy Advance downloaded with 2 gig. I remember having the entirety of Shadow Park Boy podcast. Back then it was possibly 5052, which was another gig. Yeah. I remember having a music, another gig. Zenobia. Mm. All I remember is I didn't have a lot of uh, memories left when I discovered um, that you can read mangas online. I didn't have Wi Fi at home. So what I would do I was my dad's house. That was the chapter for that. And I was a silly kid. I'm still a silly kid. I wanted to keep some space to download shit. Now, remember what I said in the first part of the video? How oh, this was gonna be a um, <laughs> a shit down memory lane. Man. I love it. I'm still, I'm still afraid of, it, of missing out. I'm still afraid of not having things. What I said in the first part is I had a lot of chapters, but so I had one, two, number five. If I say one, two, those are the big books. Number five was a small book. A big book covers around two. I had 13, I had 21, hmm? and I had 26, I remember. The craziest thing about Dragon Ball was the low amount of capture there was. <laughs> and you still manage to tell a story. There's four arcs, which is a lot less than usual. And when we're talking about... Well, I have to go to the bathroom again. Holy shit. Sorry about that. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, not a good immune system. But we're back. And I cheated. Of course I cheated. I always cheat. Um, and the reality is I checked the number of chapters. 
you'll have to forgive me it's 42 big one 589 small one i knew i've read about okay so like i said my father like i said in this video in this very video my father was like yo you have enough books that's cool and i was like okay well um the books i have i'm gonna reread right and one of the books i reread was that dragon ball in dragon ball one i possibly read it i would read it every summer for about eight nine years um, so that's nine time. I would read the second one uh, every summer for maybe six years because there was a three years distance between the fact that he bought it and that I had the first one. And um, I just knew my shit. I just knew the Dragon Ball. So there's another factor. My mom, she would buy me a lot of games. Thank you, mom. She's the one that made me a gamer. We're going to be talking about that later on too. Um, and basically what happened was that... <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's just a, a sad memory for me, you know. It's a sad, it's a very, very sad memory. So what happened was my father my mom showed buy me a lot of games. My father was like, no, no need game. I want you to go play outside. Which okay, whatever. Mmm. -hmm. Mom made some good spaghetti. This is delicious. Soup. I could bring in books. Now you knew about out of those 589, I knew possibly about, um, um, I want to say 80 to 100. So, because I have so little space on my phone, I said, the very first Dragon Ball I'm going to read is this one. Now, again, being honest, I was watching the shows, but I didn't know what they were saying. I had a comics in French. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew about 80. I had some knowledge of um, Cell Saga. I had the book for the trunks, for the trunk, trunks. Like in the passing, which was beautiful. But I missed it out, so I was like, I found out, I found out the whole thing. The first manga I've read that way was Death Note. Which I believe had 79 chapters. And this one, and I was crazy back then. I was crazy. So when I said, I swear to God, I'm being honest, during the week, I had a radio show. Well, it wasn't a radio show. It was a radio channel called Radio X, which was my very first experience with, um, kind of trash radio. So a lot of people giving their emotion, their, their opinion on politics, on the economy. And I love that shit. So, what I would do, <laughs> I swear to God, um, the whole week, I listened to them. Oh my God, it was so bad. It was so fucking bad. There was a show at between 10 and 12 that I didn't like. So what I would do, I would nap between 12 and 10, 10 and 12, just so I could get more. And at, it, the, the, the whole chat, the whole um, radio station, would like close at like seven because again it was not popular. Um, what I did was like the whole night you can listen to the re the rewind. I would do it now for the very first four or five months. They would do that. And I was in love with it. Then after that, for a year, a good year and a half, what they did was they they put the weekend be sports to bring in some people. The whole weekend, I don't like sport. I wouldn't listen. I would read. And then, after a year, the whole channel went to sports. But by then, I was working, so it's not a big deal. Um, and the weekend, I needed to do something, so I was reading. And in my head, I didn't want to... I'm still, I'm still a fucking lazy kid. I'm a lazy kid. By then, my father was working. Okay? And I know this is hard, and that's nothing to do with Akira, but it has something to do with Akira. So, my father was working for the city. He was working four days a week at nine hours a week, a day. So, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Monday was off. Me and my stepmom, we didn't have the best of relationships, so I would go when she wasn't there on a Monday. Now, as I said, he had Wi-Fi. On a Monday, I was like, okay, well... This is my only day that I'm able to download some music 
some games, and some manga. That was the only day I had. I would stay over there for three hours every single Monday. And uh, it was fun because that's my, with my father. My father was the kind of guy that just liked having me around. So we would talk for like 30, 40 minutes. And then he would work in the garden. In the garden? In the garden, sorry. So I would download. And I was like, okay, well, I want to make sure that I finish every single manga. Because every single chapter I read is another chapter I downloaded. Because the greatest thing about manga is... They're all different, but most of them have similar. So instead, unless you take something like Attack on Titan, where there's chapter three, which is a hundred pages, there are a whole lot around twenty pages. So I know by that by reading a hundred, it's gonna take me around three hours. I know that if I finish three hours of manga, I get three hours to download again. Now, um, in a great, 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 great opportunity here, I don't feel like gaming on the weekend, and I get to read. But the fear I had, fear of missing out was that I wouldn't have enough chapters. So I downloaded Dragon Ball right after um, right after Death Note. Death Note was nice, but it was more of a psychological uh, trailer, and I wanted some action. So I was obsessed with Bleach with Naruto, and um, I remember having D Bleach downloaded for 100 chapters. I remember having 800 chapters of Naruto. I was going to download 800 chapters of One Piece, but I was like, One Piece is not even close to being done. That was 10 years ago. We were in the beginning of the Wano arc. Yeah. Crazy, yeah. Crazy. So, um, I don't need Dragon Ball. And I was like, you know what? If I can manage the chapters I've read, I don't have to download it. So, at the end, we, we downloaded the whole thing. And we read it in one weekend. And yeah, Dragon Ball was great for that because I already had a knowledge of that. Dragon Ball was also great because of the story. But before we even go to the story, um, I want to go, okay, let's go with the story. So, why I thought, and people are going to hate me for that, people are going to be absolutely mad for that, but I always thought as Goku as kind of boring. Yeah, sure, Goku is a nice guy, he, he's strong, he represents the good, he represents the monkey king, sure, Goku, he, he, he spares his victim, and a lot of the characters that are in the book or are in the, the team right now, for example, Vegeta, for example, Android 18, Piccolo, they wouldn't be in a team if it wasn't for Goku. Goku would believe in sparing. He even spare Kid Buu by transforming into Hub. Right? But I always thought about him as kind of boring. Goku was <laughs> the character that didn't give really give a shit. Goku was the kind of character that sacrificed himself for the others. And I think it wasn't the problem of Goku. It was the problem of Akira. And I know what I'm, I'm doing. I'm doing an homage video to Akira. I'm blaming him for Goku. Um... Akira wasn't afraid to kill Goku off, and to me that was weird because Goku was the very first antagonist that I saw, protagonist that I saw that was kind of dead. Naruto never died, um, Luffy never died, Ishigo never died. Ishigo lost his power, yes, but way further in the story. Um, so I was like, I was mad. Like the first, the first couple of times that I saw him, like against Raditz, I was like, holy shit, he just killed himself. Uh, and I said that he said, oh, okay, he's gonna be reborn. I said, okay, cool. <laughs> Goku was also, to me, um, it was weird because, and that's, again, the problem of the writing more than Goku, but as a kid, I didn't understand that. Goku was also a father to Goten, but he never met him. And I was like, how can you not be with, with your son? But then now that I'm older, you just save the world. His son, compared to the world, doesn't matter. The biggest sacrifice required the bigger gods, right? But what I love about Akira, what I love about his story, was character like Vegeta. Vegeta, to me, to me, to, to me personally, Vegeta is the best character of Dragon Ball. And I'll fight for it. Because Vegeta starts off as this extremely selfish guy. He, he continue being this extremely selfish guy. He continue being, oh, well, maybe I have a son now, which is future Trunks. And it should be nicer, right? And then we see him change. And then the kid, Boo, or Majin Boo Saga, he sacrificed himself saying, yo, uh, I know I have a kid, but uh, I want to be stronger. I want to be the best, the stronger Saiyan. And then he sacrificed it all because he realized he's wrong. Vegeta has seen the most character growth. Um, my, my biggest issue with Goku is, what I'm trying to say with Goku is, if you take Saiyan Saga Goku, right, and you put him against Majin Buu Saga Goku, and personally trait, not in strength, and personality uh, strait, he's the same. He, he's the exact same. Vegeta change, Kid Trunks, Trunks change, Gohan. Gohan is one of the best within character in Dragon Ball. And what I love about Akira, what I love about him, it was like, yo, this story is about Gohan. It's not about Goku. It's not, it's never, it never was about Goku. Now, what really happened is, again, this is um, hearsay. 
<laughs> what really happened was that um, Dragon Ball was supposed to finish at Dragon Ball Kid. But it was so popular, they told Akira, please do more. He's like, okay, I'm going to do the Frieza Saga. Frieza Saga was supposed to end. <laughs> Frieza Saga was supposed to end with Goku being away on Namek. And the planet destroyed. And him being there with the planet. It was supposed to end there. Now, we got the Cell Saga. The Cell Saga was so popular. They said, please give us one more arc. But Go puts Akira had an idea. He wanted to make Gohan shine. So, Goku was supposed to be stay dead. So, every character in Dragon Ball can die once, be revived, and die twice. You, you cannot be revived. <laughs> So Goku died once with Raditz and the Saiyan Saga. Uh, Goku died twice with um, self cell auto destructing, and he was like, "Okay, well, I'm gonna put him in another planet. You'll be good." So Dragon Ball again was supposed to be on, around Dra Gohan. You know what they did? Dra Akira was a fucking genius. Ak Akira was one of the greatest mangaka ever. He was like, "I want to make the story about uh, with Gohan. I want to put Goku." So. And the Majin Buu saga, a lot of people are saying, even in the Cell saga, a lot of people are saying, Gohan doesn't seem like he wants to fight. Gohan doesn't want to see, him, like, like he wants to do something. The reality is, Gohan suffered PTSD on Namek. Gohan saw innocent people getting killed by Vegeta, by Frieza. Gohan didn't want to fight. He didn't want to. So, like, when he did that, he was like, okay, well, we're going to need to bring Goku back, because... Gohan doesn't want to fight. And the great part is, even though Gohan doesn't want to fight, they still made him the hero with Ultra Gohan. They still made him the hero with the um, Z sword. Right? And even if you look at the Magic Buu saga, who is the coolest character? Goku? Yeah, pretty cool. Vegeta? Well, Vegeta's dead. Right? So, not really. Gohan, kinda with, with his Z sword, pretty cool. No, the answer is Vegito. Vegito is the single coolest character in the Gohan saga, and the Bashibu saga. And then you had the villain that was so well written. You had Vegeta. Vegeta went from being an asshole who killed his only friend, it's the only other remaining Saiyan. Just to fight Kakarot. He killed Nappa. Then Vegeta <laughs> became an ally, but he was still such a bad guy. And the fact that Vegeta we're seeing him so far is so great. Frieza, even Frieza, Frieza, Frieza is phenomenal. Frieza is crazy great. Akira was a genius once again. So another one of the characters that you made that people adore is Bardock, which is Goku's father. Bardock was this character that was Again, he was one of the first saying that says, we don't need to fight. He was one of the first saying that says, I don't constantly have to fight. And we're seeing that in Goku a little bit. Um, we're seeing that as in Raditz, even Raditz. Raditz like, yo, don't don't kill me. I'll help you destroy Vegeta. And in the part that wants to believe Raditz, there's a whole empire of, there's a whole empire of people that believe that uh, Raditz could have been a good guy. Again, he could have been. I believe it too. The problem with Raditz is he would have died. He would have died in, in Namek Saga. He would have died there. Um, he would have died in Soul Saga then, because um, he would have died in Namek. They could have revived him. But then again, uh, <laughs> and the whole reason they went to Namek and to begin with the Frieza Saga is great. We killed Piccolo in the Saiyan Saga, and because we killed Piccolo, we don't have access to the Dragon Ball. So we need the Dragon Ball from Namek to revive Piccolo. And once we revive Piccolo, we have the Dragon Ball here. So when they went there, they just need help. Frieza come come from this one person who like to destroy world after world after world after world, conquer them just to destroy them. He destroyed countless world. And Namek, when he saw the uh, Dragon Ball, he was like, "Okay, this there's there's this worth to this planet. There's a worth to this planet. Let's keep it, right?" And at the very beginning, uh, Frieza was his conqueror. At his very beginning, Frieza was this fearless beast. And the funny thing with Frieza, Frieza was such a good villain because. When you think about Frieza, you think about Pilaf. Pilaf, which was the kid, Goku, sa Saga, and uh, villain. Now, I know what you're saying. He, he's, they're not the same. Well, kind of. Um, <laughs> kind of. Uh, if you look at the real uh, Frieza, he hired the Kinyu Force who are a complete farce. 
um, he hired Debor uh, Deborah and Zarban. Zarban also, I, I said uh, Al Dragon Ball uh, was for the first like black villain, which was Mr. Black. Uh, Zarban was the first like dude, was the first dude in anime, to my knowledge, to actually be super feminine. Zarban was extremely feminine, and there's nothing wrong with that, but just that it was a first for me. Um, if we're even gonna go uh, with the movie after. Um, we're gonna see Dragon Ball, and if you look at Frieza at the very end, it's like, yo, uh, Frieza to an extent doesn't like fighting, uh, that's why he keeps him himself in first form. And it's funny because if it wasn't for Frieza, Goku would not be as strong as he is. So Frieza enabled Goku to transform into Super Saiyan. And the Majin Buu saga, um, Goku was like, yo, we're gonna be training and by staying Super Saiyan. And the only reason he does that is because he knows Frieza was staying in the first form for a long, 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 long time. Why? It doesn't matter. The beauty of Frieza, the beauty of Frieza is that if you look at the, the, the Bardock saga, and again, this is more part of the movie, but if you look at the Bardock saga, you look at uh, this guy who um, basically, his grandfather of Frieza was afraid of Super Saiyan because Bardock became a Super Saiyan. It's like, yo, Super Saiyan, we can't defeat them. Right? But again, you see uh, Cold, which was the grandfather of Frieza, and you see, dude, that's weird, because he only stayed in his first form, also with the names. So the Saiyans always have vegetable name. So um, Vegeta, vegetable, Goku, Kakarot, Kakarot. you have um, Bardock, which I don't know what it is, He's like a Bardock leaf, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know much about it. If you look at the, the saga, the Frieza race, you have Frieza, Cooler, King Cold. Cooler was Frieza's brother. If you look at Cell, Cell was also this phenomenal, phenomenal villain. So Cell, a lot of people think that he's extremely, he's extremely, like, boring. But in the end, Cell is the, is the creation of Dr. Jiro. And if you, if you look at, um, number 16, number 17, no, number 16, 17, and 18, Yes, they wanted to destroy the world, but they were kind of not like... It wasn't a big deal. Cell wanted to, wanted to rule the world, and for the only reason that Dr. Jiro gave to him. He even wanted to give a chance. Cell wanted to play. Cell... Um, so every single... Um, every single enjoyed a rebellion. So if you look at 16, 16 doesn't want to fight. If you look at 18, 18 she fell in love with Krillin, and then gave up on destroying the, the sea fighter. Um, and if you look at 17, 17 was willing to run away, not to be eaten by Cell, even if it meant causing the mission. They all had this rebellion phase. Cell had this rebellion phase that created this, the Cell game, which were a tournament, right? And a tournament that was to say, okay, well, if you win, I'm going to destroy the, the, the hurt. And if you lose, I'll destroy the hurt. So it gave them a chance. So why is the tournament, the Cell game, too, so cool? It's if you look at the basic of Dragon Ball, it's all about the World Martial Art Tournament. And if you look at Majin Buu Saga, there's a lot of them, uh, but if you look at it, you're, you're seeing like, oh, this really happened. This this really happened, we're going back to the roots. Now, in the Cell Saga, at the end, uh, Cell, when he understands I cannot defeat the Z Fighter, he says, okay, I'll die for it. And this is what the others should have done. So Cell was Dr. Jiro, most faithful servant. But he wasn't, he wasn't like a, it was this evil entity. If you look at Majin Buu, Majin Buu wasn't this evil entity. The only reason he rebelled, the only reason he, he was mad, he was mean. If you look at Frieza, Frieza's an asshole. Frieza's an asshole. Vegeta, Vegeta, Vegeta was brainwashed. Vegeta was completely brainwashed. Vegeta was born of hatred. The only time, the only person he could love was his father, King Vegeta. But then he saw King Vegeta always screaming, Oh, Saiyans are so strong. Saiyans are the pride of the earth, of the universe. Saiyans are the single strongest entity alive. But then he see Frieza and King Vegeta, he bowed in front of Frieza. It's like, you lied to me. Frieza was full of hatred because that's the only thing he, he, knew, he knew. Like... He always saw Nappa as just a servant. He only always saw Raditz as an inferior race, as an inferior part of him. Um, Vegeta, even when you look at him, I know this is going to be uh, very contradictory, but if you look at Vegeta, Vegeta was a kind person from the beginning. Vegeta kept Nappa and Raditz around. And of course, he killed not Nappa, but he was like... And I think he killed Nappa out of anger because he saw Koku being so strong. Goku basically uh, one-shot uh, Nappa, just like he did with Riku. 
But before that, he was like, okay, well, Napa, I, Uranus, I know he's weak, but I can still use him. Napa, he's been around for a while. The reality is, Vegeta was probably better off without those two. <laughs> and then again, he kept him around. Which means that he was kind of like, a, he, he cared about, he cared about other people than himself, which is a trait we don't think he has before Bulma and Trunks, but it's not true. So, then you look at the Majin Buu saga. The Majin Buu saga, uh, Majin Buu was a bad guy because, again, he was constantly being used by evil entity. He was being used by Babidi's father. He was mean because he was supposed to be mean. So, he would destroy it because people attacked him. But if you look at the, if you look at Hercules, Hercules out of cowardice, he, he was nice to Buu. If you look at the kid, there's a kid that walks and he's blind and Majin Buu heals him. And then the kid is like, yo, he's super nice. Thank you so much, Mr. Boo. Mr. Thank you so much. And at the end, we realize that Majin Boo is a good guy. Now, there's an evil part of Majin Boo, which then evolves into Kid Boo and then evolves into Majin, who, Majin Boo. Um, no, sorry. So there's just Majin Boo, right? Who is this kind of like good guy. And then he's a bad guy, but a good guy. And when he realizes it's a bad, he's a good guy, he's like, I don't want to have this bad feeling anymore. He, he makes them escape. So you have evil Boo. Evil Boo absorbs Majin Boo. He becomes Super Boo. Super Boo absorbs a lot of people. And then Vegito defeats him. And then he realized that Majin Boo uh, was still there. So Vegito defeats Super Boo, even though he's the strongest. It goes inside of him to free his friend because Majin Boo absorbed them. It's like, I'm going to free Majin Boo because, again, we're going to kill him if we dish, absorb that. But by doing this, what he does is Majin Buu, um, a lot of people are saying, yeah, but Kid Buu isn't supposed to be Kid Buu because you you, t you took out Majin Buu. It's the opposite. Majin Buu was, at that point, the good Buu, the good version of Buu, the, the um, <coughs> I'm a good guy. So by doing that, you only thing that you have left is evil. That's why, that's why Kid Buu is such a degrade, is such a downgrade. So Super Buu can talk. Majin Buu Majin Buu's complicated. Majin Buu can talk, but he, he doesn't have, doesn't formulate a lot of sentence. He's like a little kid. Super Buu talks. He's super smart. He talks, like, really well. And then you look at, um, you look at, uh, Kid Buu. And Kid Buu is back to not being able to talk. And because of stability that Super Buu had, he doesn't have anymore. And that's the whole story. And there's a lot I'm skipping, but I'm not gonna say. I'm skipping the whole childhood heart because I don't know it as much. The reality is... Child, the Child of the Hark is great. I love the Child of the Hark. The Child of the Hark compared to the adult arc is boring. So if I had a choice between reading the um, the, the adult arc and the kid arc, of course I would be reading the the adult arc. Sorry, you see, woozy because of the vacation. So the, also the great thing that Akira did was some movie. And those movie guys, those movies were amazing. So picture this. Picture a 18-year-old Inky watching... A movie about his favorite main character, which is Goku, right? Listening to a song, rock and roll song. They would put rock and roll song. And the greatest thing about the movie, the greatest fucking thing, the great, the absolute best thing, is they were complimentary. So, I know them almost by heart. So, if you look at the Android 13 saga, Android 13 was a bad guy. Android 13, what he would do, I don't know, I don't know them all by heart. But I know a lot of them. So the Android 13, what he would do, he was like, uh, he was similar to the other Androids, and he was like, "Yo, I'm gonna kill everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what my Doctor Jiro said." And the greatest thing was like, "No, you're not, because you're your weaker version. You think he's a weaker version? He's actually pretty strong." And a lot of people are saying that Android 13 was stronger than the 16, 17, 18. But not sell. And that's the truth, because the problem with the Android 13 was he didn't listen. And he was so strong that he could destroy everything. So they were complemented by the Android. If you look at the Lord Slug saga, Lord Slug was this evil Namekian. So the problem with Piccolo, um, the Piccolo is one of the only warrior of Namek. If you look at Namekians in general, they're weak. They're really, really weak. So the funny thing is, um, when you go on Earth, Vegeta has his scooter, and he analyzes our power, and like, oh, every human is weak, and then he meets Krillin. It's like, okay, it's kind of strong. Then he meets Goku. And at that point, he doesn't know that Goku is a Saiyan. Well, that's not true. You know that Kaka Goku is a Saiyan, but he's not exactly sure. He doesn't know that Kakarot. He doesn't know he's Kakarot, right? So what happened is, you know, there's a saying, and only by the power level he realized. But all of this to say, Piccolo was this warrior, and we don't know why. So Lord Slug is the embodiment of that, the embodiment that, oh, there's other strong 
pick these other strong Dominicans. Also, there's a failure with the Saiyans. So the Saiyan was a warrior race and uh, hired by um, Frieza. And Frieza was like, yo, you're going to fight for me. You're going to help me conquer the planet. And the, the Saiyans were like, okay, cool. We'll be rich. Because the Saiyans were strong, but not smart. Not book smart. Um, they were street smart, but not book smart. And the other guy, the Frieza race, were book smart. And then you say, yeah, well, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You're telling me that every single Saiyan have a mission to conquer planets, but somehow when Frieza destroyed the planet, everybody was gone? How does that make sense? Well, it doesn't. One of them is Bardock. Bardock is super similar to Goku. Extremely, extremely similar. The, the reality is um, Akira um, wanted to do a, like a short version, short manga, so he didn't really create characters. So Bardock, no Bardock, sorry, Turtle. Turtle is the this uh, this bad guy, and he has a chill mind, so he understands that he's weaker than Frieza, and he wants revenge on Frieza, which is something Vegeta does. But he doesn't do the right thing, so <coughs> he has this tree of might. By sacrificing one planet, he gets some fruit, and by having those fruit, he's stronger. The reality is, Turtle is actually super strong. Turtle is extremely strong, and Turtle should have won the fight, but. <coughs> The problem with Turtle, he doesn't know. He didn't know that Super Saiyan was something that was needed. Turtle didn't use the ape, giant ape, which he could have used. Turtle was supposed to win that fight, but he didn't know, right? Turtle was the quintessential, quintessential, quintessential uh, Saiyan. So what he did, what he did was he was like, "Yo, I'm, I'm super strong. I don't need other people. I don't need to be a. I don't need to be a, a ape. I don't need to be like." Anything else but myself to kill everybody. That's what he felt. It was the Cooler saga. And the Cooler is possibly the my favorite movie. There's two of them. There's Cooler. Cooler wants revenge. He's like, I didn't like Frieza. But you still kill him and he's still my brother. So fuck you. I'm gonna kill you. And there's F Cooler Return. And the greatest thing they did with that. It was like. So Frieza when he died. And the, uh, the main and the canon history of the show. Uh, Frieza died. And he revived himself as Meta Frieza. Cooler died and revived himself as Meta Cooler, which was phenomenal because he, we knew we had the technology to do it. So the fact that we did it isn't far fetched. <clears throat> the reality is, I didn't. Even, we don't really care that they that this cheating. We don't really care that he's coming back to life. All that we care about is content. And in that one, which is great, <laughs> that both Goku and Vegeta work together. And I know most people call the movie non-canon, but it's one of the first time we're seeing Vegeta and Goku work together. And it's just beautiful because the relationship they have here is the same relationship that they have in the Majin Buu saga, which is the best relationship they've ever had in the main. Um, I know Super is canon, but I don't know Super. So I'm not going to talk about Super. Sorry, Akira. Um, yeah, so we have this movie, we have the uh, the, bar the Broly, Broly is phenomenal, Broly was one of the fan favorites, Broly, okay, so it's funny because we know, we know that Super Saiyan aren't, uh, we think that Super, okay, so Super Saiyan, what's Super Saiyan? Super Saiyan is a higher evolved form of Saiyan, we know that Super Saiyan are extremely rare, but in the Saiyan mentality, in the Saiyan culture, there can only be one Super Saiyan. And that Super Saiyan is Broly, right? So Broly is this monster of a person. Broly, un unfortunately, is a victim of brainwashed by his own father, which is something we saw with every single character of Saiyan, um, except for Bardock and Goku. So if you look at Vegeta, he was brainwashed by his father. If you look at... No, there's not a lot of them, but... Um, Broly father it was like, yo, you're the strongest, but you're so strong, I'm gonna have to put a collar on you and restrict you. Even in the uh, the Legend of Broly, which is a 2018 movie that is fantastic, amazing, we're seeing the father use his collar against Broly. I love that they, they took Broly for being like a main character in the series because he's just so cool. Now, finally, because I we got Tapion, which is I don't remember the villain. We had uh, we had Janemba, yeah, we had Janemba. We had Android and Super Android Seventeen. That's in that's in GT. We had. I'm looking for one last one. 
Um, the last one is there's this guy. He looks like a Namek. He got some blue skin, like a pirate conqueror. And what I love about these is that most of them, Goku isn't there. If you look at the Broly saga, we're seeing a Goten and a Gohan, a evolved Gohan. And what is crazy good is even though they're not canon, if you look at Broly, this is where we introduce Goten. So if you know, like, oh, there's a kid. The problem is if you need to watch a movie, otherwise Goten is he's being explained as a, I have another kids. We don't know how or why, but we have another kids. Um, the existence of Goten is for Goku to have two childs. The existence of Goten is to make Vegeta love Trunks more because Vegeta is like, okay, well, I don't like my... Oh, he likes his son. He likes Trunks, but Trunks isn't mean to be Kakarot, which is his ultimate goal. So it's like, okay, well, if I can't be Kakarot, you're going to be this son. But the, Trunks, sadly, is not as strong as the other saying. So Trunks is... One of the, he's not as strong hybrid as Gohan and Go, Goten. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know why. I think because of the royalty, Vegeta blood was, they were marrying cousin, they were marrying, like other royal and the bloodline were stringing and stringing and stringing. So if you have like a, if you have a baby with a cousin or a sister or a brother, the chances are that your, your baby's going to be deformed or mentally, uh, I have mental problem. The reality, the, the problem for that is, we were talking about it with a friend back uh, last week. The genetic code is fusing. If the, the genetic code is not enough, there's not enough diversity, you're, you're going to the same code and the same code is like, for example, if you're working with, uh, if you're a kid, usually what you're going to have is 50% from your mom, 50% from your dad. I would generally code. So uh, with the with the royalty, what you had was sadly uh, code genetic code that were not enough different. So you'd have twenty five percent from one person, twenty five percent from another person, because they were only that different, and the the rest of the fifty percent was common thing. Now, luckily enough, for example, me, my mom is Egyptian, my father is Quebecois, so there's complete diverse genetic code, which makes me um, which makes my blood better. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, bastard kids are pro pro probably the best. Not gonna lie. Lucky for that. Um, but yeah, so Vegeta, I think his code, his genetic code is a bit weaker. So that's why Trunks, if you look at other Veg other Saiyans, other than have black hair, but if you look at Trunks, he has blue hair. And then you realize that Bulma, her father, has purple hair just like him. Uh, if you look at Goku, Gohan, and Goten, I know what you're saying. Oh, well, Chi Chi, she has, she has black hair too. But if you look at, it's not only that, if you look at Gohan, <laughs> Gohan haircut is traditional saying. If you look at Goten uh, hair style or hair design is similar to Goku. If you look at Trunks, it's normal human hair. That's why it sells. So, with that being said, let's move on because we got a lot to talk about. We're going to move on to the games. As a gamer, Dragon Ball was possibly the series I love the most. And what I love about Go Dragon Ball series is they reinvent themselves. We had Dragon Ball Budokai 1. Yeah, uh, the one was a shit game, but still fun. So the one you basically had, what I loved about it, what I really, really enjoy, <coughs> is about the third one. You had the whole story. So the first one stopped at Goku. Uh, at The first one stopped at Cell. I remember it being stopped at Cell. The first one, the best thing they did was what if, what if Cell um, swallowed Krillin? And then you have this weak version of Cell. The best character from that game was Super Vegeta. Super Vegeta was kicking ass, dude. Super Vegeta was super cool. And we had those the, the classic Street Fighter uh, team where there's two people. What I love about that game is you, you're going to have combos, like square, square, square. Then you press a circle, and you're going to have a Kamehameha. In the second game, which is one of my, which is the second and third Brokai, are my favorite game ever. One of my favorite, my favorite fighting game ever. So... The second one, you have a chess. So you're basically moving pins around. And what I love about this is, just like Fire Emblem, if you had certain character inter interaction, you could unlock those characters, but you had to know them. And you would move. And the, the best thing is, for example, uh, you would have a mission against Frieza, and you had Krillin versus Frieza. So you know that Krillin's going to die against Frieza. But what was cool here is you could use Krillin to maximize the damage done to Goku. Uh, to to maximize the damage done to Frieza, and there's an ultimate secret. If you if you manage to get Frieza to kill Go Krillin, like in the movie, 
And like in the series, Goku would turn Super Saiyan. There was also a lot of really cool things that you could do, like, oh, you need to find this place, you need to find this secret, this Easter egg. There's a really cool thing with Krillin and Android 18 where they meet. And that's hard because, again, Krillin was against, like, a, I remember that field like it was yesterday. Uh, we had a field where we had so many characters. We had fucking... <laughs> we had the, the kid, Ju the Cell Jr., which were kid uh, Cell. We were super strong, too. I'm honestly already full. Full. <clears throat> yep. I was trying to maybe. One more bite? No. I'm gonna, gonna have a turn meal with that. <sighs> and what I love about this a lot is that when you find the second, the third game, it. They kind of. Not literally gave that up, but they continued. The third game was kind of an open world. There was a special event that you could have, which you know from the second game you could do. The third game was phenomenal because basically it went farther ahead than Kid Buu. So Kid Buu was the end. First Budokai was Cell, second Budokai was... Um, second Budokai was... Um, Buu. The third Budokai was Omega Shen Run. Omega Shen Run was completely optional. And what I like about this is they skipped a lot of the content. And why I like this is because, again, I didn't know GT. So there's a lot of content on my wood that I didn't, wouldn't know. The best thing about Dragon Ball Budokai 3, the thing the, that, what makes me go crazy over it. Is that... Uh, Dragon Arena. So you could fight, you could fight um, a world tournament, get, get some zennies. I still remember the cash. In those days, you could buy capsule. The strongest capsule I ever had was Frieza Spaceship. In Frieza Spaceship, you could die. And when you die, then you had a chance to become Man of Frieza. So you'd have two bars. You had, like, two life. The problem with that is you would use all of your slots. You could you can learn um, key attack. Right? So you'd basically have to only be physical. But you had every single character you could have capsule. Capsule to, to themselves. Which I really enjoyed. We had Dragon Ball. Uh, the, Budo, the, the, the the one I thought I didn't really like. Because it was too open world for me. And playability wise. Like the first time you play them there's, it's cool. <laughs> like the third time you play them it's not that great. What I love about this is the newest game. So Xenoverse 2. Xenoverse 2 I played it 10 years ago when I was working at Corbic. There's still shit being released nowadays. The Dragon Ball Kakarot, uh, which was released about five, six years ago, is still shit being reused nowadays. And this is where I want to end the videos. The greatest thing Akira Toriyama ever did, the greatest thing he ever did, himself, just him, was to create a manga that would inspire other mangaka. I was reading some Bleach, Bleach that was that said, oh, I was inspired by him, Ariye. Um, the, the, the one about basketball, Ariyu, was also influenced a lot by Dragon Ball. A lot of people were influenced by Dragon Ball. To me, I know what I said, and I know it's crazy, and I know people are going to get go after me for that, and I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry at all. The biggest loss in my life was Chetis to Bennington. Because I'm extremely empathic, I'm, I'm extremely compassionate. So when I see people sad, I, I often feel sad. Not, not because I'm, um, I need that emotion, not because I'm, I'm looking for emotion, but just because, like, yo, they're sad, I should be sad too. Chess Bennington was loved by the world, right, for the music. So the music industry was completely shattered. Akira Toriyama, although possibly for me, for people that are going to be watching this, less of an influence in the Western world than Chester, people are crying for to Akira Toriyama. The number of things I saw on the internet, the number of people that worship that guy. And it still means something. Akira, the best thing he did was create something to inspire others. The best thing he has finished his life with is Dragon Ball, something that is still meaningful today. Will Dragon Ball last forever? No. Will Dragon Ball last another 10 years? I hope so. What I do know is that I'm 21 years old. I discovered Dragon Ball, I was probably 7. 
this moment where I said, okay, Dragon Balls, I had enough. My I had enough was like, oh, the new game they would release. But it's the same game, but with new characters. I was like, okay. One of my biggest disappointments with the games was that I, I remember begging my mom. My mom, I was begging, Mama, please, I need this game. She's like, oh, I bought you the same game last year. It is 132 character new. It wasn't 130. It was Super Saiyan 1, Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3. <laughs> but still, to this day, I remember Dragon Ball as being something that was quintessential in my life. Now, I, I'm going to go slow. I'm going to sound crazy. I didn't watch GT. I watched it once or twice. I didn't watch Super. I've been talking about it with a lot with Aiden, a guy from work, or used to work. So Dragon Ball hasn't been part of my life in possibly a year. Every single time that I think about Dragon Ball, it's positive. And then I love it that you matter. I'll see you guys soon. Peace. Love you guys. And again, this is a sad day. This is a sad weekend, actually. Start filming this video Friday. Now, I think I took a decision. We're not going to finish this. We're not going to put the two together. Because fuck it.